Hello and welcome to VOA's Red Carpet. I want to thank you for joining us today. Red Carpet is a show that brings you the latest in entertainment news, in fashion, in sports, in film and television from around the world. My name is Jackson Vongani. Let's go. And we start the show with some music from Mozambique. Singer Lena Bahule uses chants and body sounds inspired by her ancestors afro tribal music in her songs she sat down with music time in africa's heather maxwell in her home country to discuss her music became her language <laughs> My given name is Elena Eneida Paj Bauli, and my popular name is Lena Bahuli. I'm from Maputo, I'm a singer, and uh, I research about vocal music, body music, and also a little bit with the more uh, global, contemporary, western kind of approach. Due to the whole colonial process, like my parents sort of got away from the mother language and uh, they, they didn't really like teach us to speak any mother language from here. And that was a big issue. I was like, oh my God, I only sing in English and Portuguese. So how did you resolve that problem? I started listening to a lot of Pan-African mother languages. <laughs> and then to get used to that articulation of it, to get used to the sound of it, understand like the, the intonation of it. And then I started creating words that sounded like African languages. <laughs> Language is not just a language, it, say, it says all about the culture and how people live. That's why my research came to the body, because I was like, okay, I don't speak my mother language, but how does my body can speak that language? Like when you're far from home, people want to, want to know who are you and what are your roots, you know? So do you have any albums out? I do, I have two. My first one is called Nomadi, and it talks about like meetings, like, like it's nomadness. So I left home and I'm always like transitioning between home and diaspora. <laughs> What was your best song on that album? My best song? I love them all. What one did most people like the most? A lot of people listen to the Congo one. Haya Congo, Congo, Haya Kungeke, Haya Congo, 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 Haya Kungeke. What about your most recent album? Yeah, well, the second one is a partnership with a bassist called João Tauki. I really enjoy doing that duo with him. We, we have a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Lena. It's been a pleasure meeting you yeah. here in the same Thank you.
A previously planned redesign of the US $20 bill was meant to include the image of famous abolitionist Harriet Tubman, but the Trump administration has delayed that project. So New York illustrator Dana Cooper decided to go ahead and start putting Tubman on as many 20s as she could. Nina Vishneva has the story narrated by Anne Rice. Check it out. Brooklyn illustrator Dina Cooper is doing what the U.S. Treasury Department said it would do years ago. She's swapping the face of President Andrew Jackson for that of abolitionist Harriet Tubman on $20 bills. Well, she's stamping one on top of the other, rather. I just kind of did a study on her face um, for these six different angles, and then I, look, I took these as reference, and that's how I made the final artwork. The decision to stamp her own Harriet Tubman bills came to Cooper after the U.S. Treasury postponed its decision to print new $20 bills. That would have Harriet Tubman's face printed on the front and moving the portrait of the U.S.'s seventh president. Andrew Jackson is, is not a great figure in American history. He enacted the Indian Removal Act. So I think that we should definitely consider who we're enshrining on our currency. The changes were supposed to happen in 2020 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the 19th Amendment that allowed women to vote. Yet the initiative was tabled by the Trump administration until 2026. Dina Cooper decided not to wait. She was eager to see the first African-American woman portrayed on the national currency as soon as possible. I grew up only 40 minutes away from where Harriet Tubman was enslaved. And so this is something that I've heard of for a long time. I've been hearing about her legacy and the things that she did for the Underground Railroad. Cooper is not alone. A number of like-minded activists support her and use their own means and finances to create rebranded $20 bills. Today, there are more than 1,500 new banknotes in the country, in New York, Virginia, <laughs> Michigan, and California. Someone came up to us actually at a table and asked what we were doing and said, this looks very shady. I want to know what, what you're doing. And they contributed 20s too. Okay, I have 20. Can you do it? Mm -hmm. Giving the $20 bill a new face is perfectly legal, Cooper says. As long as the special magnetic stripes are intact, the bill has to be accepted anywhere in the country. ATMs don't have a problem with them. Cooper says that after this experiment, she started considering other banknotes as well. Benjamin Franklin isn't, he's not, he wasn't a president. Why is he on, why is he on our currency? But Cooper admits she can never take on one of the founding fathers. So the $100 bills seem to be safe. When you know in New York, NRI, UA News. After winning some of her greatest acclaim for the heavy-duty drama Middle of Nowhere, docudramas Selma and When They See Us, and the documentary 13th, director Ava DuVernay has taken a moment to cherish the day with a new romantic anthology series that she says has provided her a bit of a break. Mm, light bulb moment was that um, I can make a, a show that did not have to be about politics, in history, it could just be about love and, and beauty and joy. And when I embraced that, this became a whole lot of fun. Duvanez fans know that her idea of filmmaking fun usually includes some groundbreaking element. In the case of Cherish the Day, each eighth episode season follows the relationship of one couple for five years, with each installment set during a single significant day. And complicating matters for the viewers those days are not rolled out consecutively. It was a beautiful challenge as a storyteller to be able to kind of break apart an overall love story into daily bites. And these, day, these, these episodes are chronological, but they are, not, um, they are not consecutive. So the first episode is one day, the day that they meet. The next episode is a year later. The third episode is three months later. And so it allows us as filmmakers and as storytellers to be able to jump around in this relationship, but also to really trust the audience to fill in the gaps of what's happening in between. I think especially for black storytellers, women storytellers, storytellers, um, storytellers of color, uh, we find ourselves in very uh, traditional boxes of storytelling because we're just so happy to be able to tell the story. And so for me, it was really exciting to say, you know what, we're here, we're on Oprah Winfrey's network, let's experiment with 
with a new way to tell the story. And also to keep it fresh so that every season there's a new challenge of a new couple. The first five episodes show that the series is called Cherish the Day for a good reason. Duvernay said that her perspective on life and love took dramatic turns following the sudden death of her father in early 2016. More than anyone, Duvernay said her father informs the stories in Cherish the Day. I had an incredible relationship with him. And um, I was just thinking the other day, I was unpacking and uh, looking at some pictures and I thought, you know, we had great moments. So that really made me hone in on we need to value, uplift, and honor the moments. And I think that is the core of the series. Born in Kinshasa in 1978, photographer and visual artist Christian Tundula studied art at the Academy of Fine Art in Kinshasa using photography to highlight the difficulties of urban city life in big African cities like the neighborhood he grew up in. He tells his story in this episode of our Picture Africa series, which highlights a new generation of photojournalists, fashion photographers, and visual storytellers across the African continent, produced by our own colleague, Betty Ayub. Je m'appelle Christian Tundula. Je suis visual artiste, photographe. Je suis d'origine de la République démocratique du Congo et les trois dernières années, j'ai vécu en Ouganda, Kampala, où ça m'a amené pour aller travailler pour une petite ONG qui s'occupait des enfants de rue. J'ai essayé de réécrire leurs histoires via ma photographie et j'ai appelé ce travail-là « Street Journey ». C'est un voyage sans fin, c'est un voyage utopique, c'est un rêve que les enfants ont de quitter le village, de venir à la grande ville de, de Kampala. Et ils se retrouvent dans cette grande ville perdue et en train de tourner en rond, ils se retrouvent sur la rue de Kampala et en train de mener cette vie de street boys. Il y a un avion qui, qui survole en fait un quartier urbain de, de Kampala. Mais tout ça, c'est des montages photographiques euh, parce que c'est des photos que je prends dans différents endroits quand j'accompagne les enfants. Et après, je fais un travail de reconstruction de leur histoire. Donc, chaque photo représentait pour moi une histoire d'un enfant que j'ai accompagné à Campagne. The Day After, ça consiste sur les problématiques de la mobilité. J'ai rencontré quelques dizaines des Africains qui ont choisi de faire euh, ce qu'on a dit en Italie, la traversée, de faire euh, la traversée, donc pas seulement la traversée de, 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 de la mer Méditerranée, mais ils ont aussi fait la traversée du désert. Cette photo-là dit tout pour moi. En fait, c'est un, un regard de quelqu'un qui, qui, qui a un regard sur un, euh, un des amis, un des, des, des compagnons qui est resté pendant la traversée. Et si vous regardez très bien le pied qui est là, c'est un pied numéroté. C'est un pied identifié, en fait. Si on regarde, donc, généralement, et toi et moi, on est tous des sujets qui ont la, un numéro d'identification. Beaucoup de mes sujets, de mes portraits que j'ai réalisés, c'est des sujets que j'ai modélés moi-même manuellement. En fait, c'est un peu une sorte de sculpter mes modèles. Je pense que la photographie, pour nous, jeunes Africains, la photographie, c'est une façon d'archiver, de, de c'est une façon d'écrire euh, nos quotidiens, d'écrire notre propre histoire. C'est un très bon outil d'expression artistique aussi. I want to thank you for watching VOS Red Carpet. My name is Jackson Vunganya. Remember, for more entertainment news, to check us out at www.voanews.com. We are on Facebook, on Instagram, and on YouTube. Until next time, goodbye, everyone.